Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a mixed bag of various rack improvements that I've been wanting to do, ultimately leading up to being able to mount and install this UPS I bought, and I went over that in another video. It's been sitting there since I tested it, probably put it in the bottom, uh, seems like that's what everyone does, it's good enough spot for it I guess. And then we'll get a bunch of these cables cleaned up, I'll clean up all this stuff, get it off, and we'll measure and actually cut this piece of wood I bought two years ago or something to fit and actually bolt it to the top of the rack and then put the monitor and stuff back up there. I've also had this sort of cable modem just hanging here since I moved in. I'll figure out a better spot for that. Um, and it it is just kind of randomly routed to the top here. So we'll get this a little more formalized. Uh, I also have a few lines coming from the switch that actually go into that box. So I'll probably crimp those and get those set up if I ever want to put anything in there. And uh, let me switch to the other side of the rack here and show you how we're going to finish up. All right. So yeah, we'll get all this cleaned up and you can see this piece of wood is obviously not the right size, but, um, I believe, yes, there are some holes I can bolt it to once I, once I cut it down, uh, maybe we'll sand it up a little bit too. So we'll get that cleaned up. And then I made a pretty big mistake, <laughs> uh, when I first routed all my drops in going up into the house. So you can see, I brought them up and over the rack here, which means I can't actually bolt this piece of wood down until I reroute all these wires, unfortunately, which I'm not really looking forward to. And it involves turning the internet off and pissing my wife off. So yeah, but, but it's time I need to get it done. My plan is that, so there's not a bunch of strain on these, uh, hanging off this, um, UNVR. I'm actually going to install a rack shelf backwards. Um, so I don't know if you knew this, but Racks, typically, you're able to install stuff on the backside, too. It's got all the rails and spots for it. Uh, so we'll have a shelf that's actually coming off here like this. I'll show you installing that and what it's like to actually use cage nuts and stuff. Uh, and then these, I'll get these all loomed up into a bundle and probably zip tie it to that shelf so it doesn't move around. And that's probably where I'll put the cable modem as well. So first things first, we'll clean this up, take some measurements, and then I'll uh, cut up this piece of wood. All right, check this out. So this is how I'm gonna cut this piece of wood. Uh, I've never used one of these before. It's called a track saw and it can actually plunge down and it follows along this track and makes a really smooth, easy cut supposedly. So um, I've only ever cut plywood with circular saws or something like this job site saw. Uh, and you, for something like I'm about to do, which is arguably borderline carpentry. So you want a reasonably uh, straight cut these just aren't going to do it. Maybe a big full size table saw would work. Um, but yeah, I was helping my dad. He was, he's been remodeling a house and I helped him a couple times and he picked this up for me as a, as a thank you. Uh, something I never would have bought myself. So I'm going to try it out for the first time here. It's supposed to, it's supposed to be a game changer. So see how it goes. All right. Already encountered the first problem. To be fair, these are not the Makita rails. They're a, theoretically a generic one that should work with this. And I don't know if I can show this, but if you the saw goes down, it's going to hit this rubber lining bumper uh, and just cut through it. So I think I have to flip this over and peel that off and move it over so that the, the saw clears. So I'll do that now. Decided to just cut it off. So this was right here and I just took a utility knife and swiped it. Uh, I can't remember if I saw anything about that in the reviews, um, but should work now. All right, so I did a test cut and I can already tell it's going to be near impossible to ever go back to a normal circular saw. So it doesn't weigh very much. It takes two of my Makita batteries. There's a bunch of different brands of these. Uh, after one cut, I'm impressed with this one. Uh, basically, it goes on the track. There's rubber on the bottom of this, so you line it up. It doesn't move around really. You, uh, you plunge and go. You can't, you can't really mess it up. So yeah, I can see why everyone really loves these things and you can even use it. It's not just for big projects. I mean, obviously this piece of wood's not very big. I'm only using one of the two tracks. So yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. But anyway, I know you're not here for a tool review. So uh, I'll time-lapse making the rest of the actual cuts for my piece here and then we'll get back to the computers.
All right, before I get these cables unplugged and button it up with the piece of wood on top, I wanted to show you what I meant by mounting a shelf on the back for these as well as the cable modem. So I've got this rack mounted shelf. They come in various sizes. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it backwards in here. And it's got spots where I can zip tie stuff to the shelf, including this bundle of cables and that modem. I can put that on the shelf. So I'll put it, I don't know, somewhere down here and we can rack mount it just like any other appliance. Uh, and so I think that'll clean up things quite a bit. All right, grabbing some supplies here. So basically you use these things called cage nuts to mount stuff in the rack and these go and clip in on the back and then a bolt comes in through the front of course. So we've got these, these bolts uh, and there's also, I think these are optional, but they kind of protect the, whatever you're bolting into. There are these little plastic washers. I think I have one. Yeah. So this bolt has one on there. Looks better. And I think it kind of protects um, whatever you're screwing into. So yeah, I'll grab a bunch of these. Most stuff like, you know, a shelf or something you're buying doesn't come with this hardware. Um, some nicer stuff will like my, the UPS might've, but basically when I got the rack, I went on eBay and bought a bag of all this stuff and I keep it in this, this organizer. So yeah, I'll grab a bunch of those that I need to have just I have the shelf, the UPS, and a couple other things to bolt in that I'll show you. And then I also keep a bunch of zip ties on hand. So take a look in here. So yeah, for all the wire management, I, I always keep bags and bags of zip ties because um, they're, they're cheap and useful. So I'll grab a bunch of this stuff and uh, get back to the rack. Just wanted to show, also going to need to put the rack ears on this UPS. So I have one sitting in there now, and obviously this one goes here. And I joked earlier about everyone puts it on the bottom and I'm starting to think about it a little more. And it's because this thing is like 30 pounds. Uh, it's going to be an absolute nightmare to rack it up by myself. I'm going to have to have some stuff under it. Uh, so I'll be sure to film that. That'll be fun. All right. We've got this shelf in I was talking about and the internet's un undone. The, the modem's just sitting there. And what I'm going to do while I'm unplugging everything is I'm going to tidy up this bundle because you can see it kind of just splays and, and gets out of control down there. And so what you do is you use something called a wire comb. And so you feed uh, a bunch of the wires into here, uh, you close it back up again and you can comb them into one unit. And so that's actually how I got these bundles all here to look really, really uniform and nice. And so I'm going to do the same thing here, uh, you know, while I'm at it. Uh, and then we'll get this, this big bundle resting on this shelf, which will free me up and I'll actually be able to put that piece of wood on. So here we go. Look at this. I have been wanting to see this for a long time. So much better. So you can see with the comb, I did two bundles initially and then bundled them up together just to make it easier to comb. I, they might have all fit. I'm not sure. The shelf is taking all that strain, which is great. It's not landing landing here on the router or the, the switch, I mean. And then it comes down looking a lot better, obviously comes up and then it kind of <laughs> turns into chaos again. So unfortunately, and I can probably zip tie that a little better and make it a little less crazy. So unfortunately the lines coming out of my rack aren't all the same length. I was kind of eyeballing it when I did it, uh, but that's okay. The problem is now that it's one bundle, the shortest one to connect is going to take all the strain and have to hold all that on this keystone, which obviously isn't going to work very well. So to mitigate that, I just put in, a little bracket and I zip tied the bundle here. So the vast majority of the weight is actually being held by this bracket. So everything's fine. So now we'll, we'll carry on. We'll get that hooked back up. We'll get the, the cable modem that's unhooked back up here and it'll sit on this shelf for now and we'll get internet back, put the top on here. And then finally 
rack that UPS. Check it out. So much better. Cut to size. Bolted on there with these little bolts. We had a little bit of a drill blowout because I had to, I marked on the bottom and drilled out. So lesson learned on that one. Uh, won't do that again. And then over here, of course you saw this bundle already. On the shelf, I just have the cable modem sitting there. So that's nice. Uh, and we have room over here for either another bundle coming out from the bottom patch panel or probably the Raspberry Pi for the UPS, I think. So yeah, this is looking a lot, lot better. Really excited to put this back in place and get the monitor back on. Maybe someday I'll paint it or something, but for now it's good enough. I'm never gonna paint it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I think I wanna rack this one right under the existing power distribution unit um, for no reason other than I think it'll look fine there. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have a, another server coming in eventually here, so we'll leave that. I'll take this old panel out and move it down. And then while I was grabbing that shelf, I realized I'd actually bought some other stuff and we'll put it in while we're here. Another panel, I won't be able to fill it in completely, but it'll look a little better. And then I have another one of these kind of brush guards. So it just lets wires pass through. It's kind of nice if you don't really know what you're gonna do with a slot. And as you can see, I have one here. And right now these DAC cables are just sliding through. So we'll put that in there and I think that'll look really nice. So first I'll, uh, get this other old panel out and then I got to figure out some stuff to pile up. This thing's very heavy and I'm on my own. So I gotta, I gotta have it on something before I, before I bolt it in. Otherwise it's, it's just not going to work. So, uh, let's do that now. Okay. I cannot believe how well that went. So it went so fast. I didn't even have a chance to film this. So what I realized is this panel here could support the front of this as I slid it in. And I could reach from underneath and support the back with one hand while I screwed in the, the cage bolts. So went super smooth. So if you're ever doing this on your own and you have a blanking panel, that's actually a really good way to support the front of the appliance you're putting in. So that's awesome. Uh, put the two extra panels here. I have one slot left or a, a U and a half, I guess. And then I installed this brush panel here, which I think looks really nice. Now all the DAC cables just slide through that really smooth. And then the full view here, we've got the top back on, of course, which is great. And yeah, this looks really good. Huge improvement. So around back on that shelf, I've got the Raspberry Pi that's hooked up to the UPS. So if you didn't see my other video, this guy actually is hooked to the UPS with a USB cable and is listening for power outage events. And so when the UPS goes into battery mode, this guy can tell servers I've configured to listen that they need to shut themselves down. So um, that was kind of the whole point of this video is to clean the rack up enough so that I could get to this point and put my UPS in. Uh, so success. The two servers, the two Dell servers are now on the UPS. They have not been configured to turn themselves off. So uh, when there is a power outage, I noticed during, during peak power draw while the servers were booting, the UPS was telling me I had something like 19 run minutes. So... That's pretty good. I just have to run down here if the power's out. Ooh, 16, 16 minutes. Um, but that's enough. It's kind of a relief. So that also tells me I definitely need to get another UPS for everything else to leave the internet running and let the power hungry server shut down. So yeah, uh, a lot more to do, a lot of power cable management and uh, the rack's kind of a mess internally, but man, does it look better from the outside? And I'm really happy with the progress we made today. If you made it to this point, thanks a lot for following along as I made various improvements to the rack and got the UPS in finally. I'm really happy to have these two servers on battery backup in case there's a power outage, even if it's not automated yet, I'll get to that eventually. Obviously there's a lot more to do as always, but I think it looks a lot better than when I started today and I'm really happy with the progress. I have a lot more video ideas, uh, so stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, one more quick PSA. So. I'm editing the video that you're watching now, and that was last yesterday that I put that UPS in. That night, the power went out. So last night, hours after I put that UPS in, we had a power outage, and the two servers stayed on. I happened to be down here, and I could hear the thing beeping and screaming, so ran in there and was able to safely shut down those two servers. So the thing is like already paid for itself, so I'm, I'm pretty happy about that, and I'm even happier with my, my timing. So. I will definitely get around to automating that shutdown procedure so that in case I'm not here,
the servers will shut down safely and, and everything will be fine. So anyway, I thought that was hilarious and just wanted to throw it in there. Um, thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.